Hello and welcome to the Nexus Today Show. The puppet masters, the people who use their money, skills and even star power to affect the way we vote in referendums. First up, the billionaire George Soros is trying to overturn Brexit. He's Hungarian-American, so what's it got to do with him? We're also looking at another George, George Clooney. Well, he's hardly a puppet master, but he and others have directly intervened in other people's votes. Is it right? And hired guns. The men and women who win you a referendum if you're willing to pay the price. All that and more here in The Nexus. Hello, I'm Matthew Moore, and today in the Nexus, we are looking at how George Soros and other powerful people are trying to influence the way we think and vote. So, we are joined by one of the world's top experts on referendums, Professor Matt Kvortov. Now, he believes Soros should definitely not be interfering in Brexit or any other vote for that matter. We also have Kevin Craig, who takes the opposite view. He's a lobbyist who thinks billionaires should be able to spend, spend, spend. One of the Hired guns we talked about in the headlines. So, now we're all gathered, let's watch our first report on one of the most divisive men on the planet. The man who broke the Bank of England, George Soros. I'm going to expose Soros. And I'm going to wade into this and show again what this monster has done. He thinks that you should be decent to one another, and he donates to progressive causes because he thinks we shouldn't rip each other to shreds and that everybody should have equal rights. Large-bodied predators are swimming here in the waters. This is the transborder empire of George Soros, with tons of money and international heavy artillery. The current Hungarian government attempt to intimidate and discredit civil society is totally unacceptable. One of the criticisms that a lot of Republicans have is that George Soros is too influential with his money. If he re-elects President Bush, and we shall be at war for a long time to come. I consider the Trump administration a danger to the world. The use of money and the influence it may have had on the Brexit result or the Trump election has reached a level of virtual hysteria. Billionaire George Soros donated nearly half a million pounds to a campaign group which is seeking to halt Brexit. Mr Soros is no friend of Britain. He once made one and a half billion betting against the pound. George Soros has pledged a whopping ten million dollars to fight hate crimes in the United States. I have dedicated my foundations and my life to promoting open society. George Soros recently gave open society, his organization, $18 billion. Leaked documents from George Soros's Open Society Foundations show persistent efforts by the organization to influence the political process in Europe. So a lot of conservatives will attack their opponents by saying that they're funded by George Soros. The more we learn about Soros, the more I think people will become very suspicious of what he's doing. And some people have the gall to call him a fascist or a terrorist. It is disgusting. Get your facts straight. I stand up for the principles I believe in, and I don't allow to personalize these attacks. I stick to my principles, and I think we shall prevail. We shall prevail. Let's go to Kevin Craig. Why should he prevail and not the British people? Well, why, why shouldn't he have a voice? Well, I mean, he it's absolutely unbelievable to see Nigel Farage, uh, as we just saw in that piece there, complaining about uh, Soros investing money into the post-Brexit result debate. Um, people with means and money, there's a long history of them getting involved in issues that matter. And Soros has got a, I agree that he didn't cover himself in glory when he made a lot of money at the expense of uh, Britain's currency back in the day. But on this issue, 
Um, he is merely trying to get the, the result that, he, yes, suits his own commercial interests, no doubt. But there are millions of people in Britain and beyond in Europe who think that the result for the referendum was a disaster yes, and one a, more voice is great. There's a key difference, though. Nigel Farage is from Britain. Yes, but look at some of the money that came into the EU referendum campaign. 95% of the money spent on either side uh, came from 100 people, and a majority of that came from uh, levers. And it was often funded by people who draw heavily on offshore uh, funding and some very dubious sources. So I don't buy this moral outrage against what Soros well, is doing. OK, that's a good point. Uh, Professor Quartrop, the gloves are off. Everyone's spending on both sides. Why not Soros? Well, it is a principle that democracy is about the people's choice. It's not plutocracy, which is the government by money. Uh, if somebody from Britain wants to contribute money, that's a, that's a fair thing, because this is a British referendum. And the, there was a roughly a level playing field. The, the levers were spending slightly more. But one of the wonderful things about the British regulation of referendums, which is probably the best in the world, is that during the campaign, you cannot uh, receive money from overseas. There's simply a ban on that. So to then start to pay money afterwards is certainly not um, accord in accordance with the spirit of the law as it is here in Britain. So for, for Soros, who is not a British citizen, who is uh, an American, a Hungarian, to come from the outside to spend money in, in our referendum, I think that is a bit dubious. And it, what we can sort of imagine if somebody called Vladimir Putin, who is also, I think, privately a very wealthy man, if he started to spend money on, on British politics, we would be outraged. So if it happens to be a millionaire, um, I don't think that makes any difference, really. Uh, Kevin Craig, they often say, don't they, the British people have spoken already. Nobody wants or rather, it is decided, and therefore, why should there be another referendum just because the outcome didn't uh, satisfy George Soros? Well, it's not just about George Soros. He, he, whilst he's a foreign national, he speaks for millions of people in this country who heard the aforeseen Nigel Farage say that a 52-48 result would have to be looked at again. Um, I actually respect the, the professor's view on on the theory of foreign nationals having uh, a say in our in our uh, system and actually Britain is the I think the cleanest electoral system that I can think of in the world but on this issue I am in favor of the principle of well-intentioned rich people getting involved in causes well, and campaigns well you, you say across it's well-intentioned because it happens to accord with how you see the world but what if you saw the exact opposite happening then you would be against it presumably yeah, but I'm sitting in my living room looking at video footage consistently of a red bus that told British people that 350 million quid a week was going to go to the NHS if they voted leave. Fair Where enough. is it? Uh, well, fair enough. Actually, if, if, we can just, if I can just intervene there, I actually think there should be another referendum. There's really nothing that says there shouldn't be another referendum, but it should be done in a fair way. Uh, there's probably now a majority of voters who want a referendum. Many of the polls suggest that, that people would actually vote to remain if there were an, was another referendum now. And interestingly, before the referendum, a man called Boris Johnson said there would definitely be a second referendum. Ah. Uh, and uh, the same individual, I think, uh, said that, that we would stay in the customs union. Uh, I'm just sort of adding that just for, for, for effect, if you like. So, I, so I you're hanging them with their own rope, in other words, Professor. But let me ask you another question. Um, how is it, uh, it is legal, what George Soros is doing, but just, just explain the distinction between spending during the referendum and what he's doing now. Right, there is, in accordance this uh, political parties elections and referendums act which is quite a mouthful uh, says there is a so-called referendum period and in the referendum period there is a limit to what you can spend also during that period there is a designated leave campaign and a designated remain campaign or a yes or a no side depending on the issue and they then get a public grant so they can they have got some money to fight the referendum campaign okay let's let's move off brexit now and look at soros's bigger project his open society foundation it's a huge network. Let's have a look. Look, it's, it's headquartered there in New York and has channeled $38 billion to over 100 countries since being set up in 1979. Now, the Foundation's stated mission is to build vibrant and tolerant societies whose governments are accountable and open to the participation of all people. It mostly focuses on lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, migrant and women's rights through better education, improved health care, justice and an independent media. 
Well, I mean, he seems to be doing a lot of good and a lot of charities. Uh, Kevin Craig, uh, why does he then get so much flack in the media? Because uh, George Soros becomes, in, from jurisdiction to jurisdiction, a useful political target for politicians and campaigns that don't share his world view. So he's come in for some real uh, criticism in Hungary because there are elections coming up there and it suits him to be portrayed as this uh, uh, foreign progressive interferer. And because uh, he gets criticism um, for getting involved. And it's one of the reasons why a lot of the very wealthy people that I've ever worked with are so nervous about getting involved in politics and campaigns. It's because despite their immense means, they often surprisingly have very thin skin and they're not ready for the um, consequences of putting your head above the parapet. Mm. You mentioned uh, elections and, and how uh, politicians, I mean, for example, in Hungary, his native Hungary, we have pictures of Viktor Orban here. And we saw him in that report uh, saying that George Soros was like a, well, basically like a predator. Um, Professor, do you think that Viktor Orban of Hungary is just paranoid or is there some reason to suspect George Soros? Well, I think it's a little bit rich of Viktor Orban with respect to, uh, to the Prime Minister uh, to, to have a go at, uh, at George Soros. I mean, Viktor Orban is somebody who has uh, packed the, the, the courts with uh, his supporters. He's been involved in what can probably best be described as a gerrymandering of the Hungarian constitution. So to have a go at somebody who has established probably the best uh, university in Central Europe, uh, you know, I think that is... That is probably stretching well, it a bit. Well, perhaps he's thinking about what happened in Georgia, where uh, George Soros backed Mikhail Shakashvili and through the United Nations managed to fund most of the cabinet. I mean, he, he does have real power behind the scenes. Yes, but it's also interesting what happened to Shakashvili now. He's basically on the run. Uh, so uh, well, that, so wasn't, the, 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 that wasn't quite <laughs> in the script, perhaps, I don't know. Well, no, yeah. it really wasn't. But the, uh, the point I'm making is that when George Soros sometimes gets involved, uh, it is, uh, you know, his, notwithstanding his, his wealth, it's, uh, it's not always clever. And, uh, and sometimes it's sort of, you, you feel this sort of like the global guardian reader uh, sort of goes in with, uh, with sort of, you know, all in, uh, if you like, to use a, a, um, a sort of the casino metaphor, but, uh, but there are also quite a lot of losses. So That's his, right. So no, no, and it even bears out in the United States. Let's have a quick look at that. You know, unlike many donors, Soros is quite open about his political donations and is a major contributor to the U.S. Democrats. Take a look at what's happening in the United States. He spent $26 million trying to put Democrats, including Hillary Clinton, into office in 2016. Another $5 million to Barack Obama's first presidential campaign back in 2008. Another $2 million to groups associated with his 2012 election bid. And going back even further, he spent big against George W. Bush, giving a total of $25 million to groups and candidates that opposed him. And that was uh, back in uh, 2000 and 2004. Now, he's supposed to be a Democrat, Kevin, but the truth is, you're, you know, he can be a Democrat if it's one man, one vote, or one person, one vote, but really his voice is in proportion to his money. Well, the funny thing is, of course, you say that, but his, his voice doesn't always uh, find itself to be successful. And the, yeah, but the that's not his intention, about, is it? He wants to be successful. Yeah, he wants to be. But I mean, I would contend that across all jurisdictions, you'll always have people with means, a percentage of them will want to influence the public debate. They'll want to get involved in politics. And then it's up to the strength of the regulatory regime in each jurisdiction to, to manage that and make it as uncorrupt as possible, which the professor's expert on. But Soros doesn't always pick winners. And I actually think that's great and helpful that no matter what your money, you mm. can't always buy the result. Well, no, I, I, yeah, I, Professor Quartrop, go ahead. You know, I'll, I'll second that. I think what is important is the transparency bit. And I suppose Soros, in, in that sense, mm. uh, is, uh, is an honourable person because it, everything is above board, just as it is with the Koch brothers, of ah, course, well, which, which we have is some, the other side. No, that, that's, a good, that's a good comparison. We have some pictures here of the Koch brothers and also Mercer, who you'll be uh, familiar with. Um, do, do you think it's then, uh, Kevin Craig, just fair... All's fair in love and war. There's billionaires on both sides, and uh, that's just the highest rungs of the battle. I think that's that's fair, actually, and I think it's 
I think it's you always need to try and maximise the, the the regulation and control of of these issues that the system in any given country exerts. But in history, and certainly in my working life, you find people with means. You know, often an individual's first struggle is to be financially okay in their life, successful, and then they look around. What next? What's the purpose of my existence other than to make more money and spend it? And a percentage of them mm. get involved in politics and policy. Kevin, we're, we're going to leave George Soros alone now. We've harassed him quite enough. We're going to move on to another George, George Clooney and the reclusive billionaire Chuck Feeney. Now, while they certainly don't qualify as puppet masters, they have intervened in referendums abroad, which begs the question, whose vote is it anyway? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Come on. Show me the money. Show me the money. Yeah. Because it feels good right now. Yeah. I was here 100 days ago and there wasn't a single person, not a member of the Security Council who was also here, who thought that this referendum would happen at one time. It did. It's very hard to criticise George Clooney, such a beloved actor around the world, but we're going to try. Let's go to Professor Kvothrop. Um, with the George Clooney story in Sudan, you actually have some direct link to what was going on. You were working at the State, State Department at the time. What yes. was the view there of George Clooney's role? Well, I was, I was part of the team that negotiated the referendum. Uh, we were mediators between the two sides in Sudan. Uh, and the American State Department and American government at the time was very interested in getting the right result, which was the Sudanese government had been uh, a bit too friendly with Osama bin Laden, and therefore if South Sudan could be uh, too lopped off, that was in their interest. And therefore George Clooney was probably, it wasn't exactly articulated, was considered to be a little bit of a useful idiot to use, I think Lenin was the first one to use that expression. And sometimes celebrities will have, uh, you know, very high profile view. I think David Beckham supported the, uh, the Remain side uh, in the Brexit referendum they were not supposed to talk to, uh, talk about anymore and so did um, a number of other people. Well, there's a very tough criticism of George Clooney. Um, a, a lot of people would defend him for sure and say, actually, you know, yes, he helped secure the referendum, but uh, what followed is not his fault and he hasn't turned his back on the country. Mm, uh, no, but I think one could also argue whether that referendum was in fact fair. I mean, it's very difficult to run a referendum. It's a completely illiterate society that is war-torn where 2,000 people actually die every month. Um, it, it probably also, if you could say, fo to focus away from Darfur, which is an infinitely more bloody crisis. So, so I think George Clooney was, was uh, you say, puppet master. I think he was probably the very opposite at the time, but he, he might not even know that. But, but if I criticise George Clooney, my wife is going to be very uh. cross with me, I think. So, uh. <laughs> okay. If you were running a referendum campaign, I think you would be delighted to have George Clooney on side. You, you couldn't lose, could you? You can't. And uh, well, that's the point. I did some okay, stop right work there. Right. Here in, right, 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 uh, in right, the right. So half. here's the thing, Kevin. So you've got George Clooney. You can't lose. How does that? How is that democratic? What? 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 Uh, uh, well, I don't actually understand your question. Okay, I mean, my what, question. What, I I'll take, I'll take, take issue with the question, if I may, actually. My yeah. my question is, if if you've got star power and you know how to appeal to to voters, isn't that just manipulation? 
I think you are asking a, you're making a very controversial premise there, because I welcome, whether in politics, high finance, academia, wherever, individuals of note, whether it's in their career and their achievements, their professional qualifications, or their money, or their celebrity, if they have a broader world view and a desire that their footprint at the end of life is more than just their initial feel, but the kind of world they live in, even if their views are extremely different to mine, I like the fact that they're engaged and they're bothered. And I think all organisations should welcome that. So what if they're not qualified necessarily on the subject as much as, as, much as they should be, but they have star power? Are you still in favour of using them? Totally, because we, democracy, you know, in theory should be one vote, one man, one vote, one woman, one vote. Professor Fortrop, if you could yes. pick up on that, I'm, I'm slightly confused. One man, one vote or one billionaire, one billion votes? I don't get it. Which one Well, is I it? think if, if, if we're looking at one particular country, say, say America, then they, they will normally, I think in my book I call it, uh, billionaire pluralism, which is basically like, you know, for one billionaire on one side, there would normally be a billionaire on the other side. Uh, and there is roughly a level playing field there. So, so in that sense, I'm not too bothered about it. I'm also not too bothered about having celebrities coming out uh, in favour of that. And I, you know... What does I, David I, Beckham know about anything? Well, well, I don't know what David... Well, he probably knows something about crossing balls. That's and, about and, and, it. And, okay. Exactly. Let's and, move. And, and actually, that is my point. It, and most people will say that. I mean, I was in Sweden in 2003 and at the time a Bjorn and Benny from ABBA came out <laughs> uh, and the winner takes it all he would have thought uh, and and they thought that the euro would be such a marvelous idea and the opposite campaign then uh, said instead of listening to Benny, Benny and Bjorn and money 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 uh, they just had a single mother saying how will I pay for my mortgage so people didn't listen to ABBA because they brightly said well, yes they probably live in Monaco I anyway. love listening to ABBA but only on the car stereo let me ask you about Chuck Feeney then and that's the uh, Irish American billionaire who uh, put a lot of money into the the pro gay marriage uh, referendum in Ireland which which that side of the argument won do you think that was democratic I don't think it was no and Ireland of course does not have the same levels of regulation as we have in the United Kingdom although they have many 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 more referendums than than we have here and I think it, it is, it's always problematic if you've got somebody from the outside trying to intervene and influence the result of that country. Okay, let's, let's turn to uh, our other guest's favourite subject, um, you know, how to win them. Referendums aren't just won or lost on arguments and the money spent. You've got to know how to influence, maybe even manipulate people. And that's where the hired guns come in, experts in winning referendums. More guns. Fewer guns, open borders, closed borders, better together, better apart. Whatever you want, Strictly Referendums can make it happen. We'll show you how to maximize emotional engagement, we vote for freedom. optimize social media impact and choose the right person to front the issue. To get the results you want, don't chance it, call Strictly today. Need a referendum in a hurry? Then ask about our premium package. Don't let the seeds of dissent take root. Weed them out now and create the future you want. Get me strictly. With a range of services available, there's a package that will suit any budget and any country. So don't delay. Call today. Strictly referendums is strictly for parody purposes only. Well, not a real ad and not a real company, but uh, Kevin Craig does run a real company that does just that for you, or not, not all of those tactics. What are the most important tactics, Kevin, for winning a referendum? You have to have a message that, that resonates with the target audience. You've got to have compelling spokesmen or women. You've got to have an ability to know how to target your audience. Is it through newspapers, public meetings, online, broadcast media? And the biggest thing that was missing, for example, in the EU referendum for the Remain side was an ability to win an argument down the pub or out in a cafe in simple language that can just influence the vote of the person and and all those components ah. uh, plus energy and a vision and optimism often they're part of it. Uh, Professor Quartrop we have a very important referendum coming up in Ireland on abortion. Ireland seems to be changing rapidly. Uh, do you think that uh, will be which, which side do you think will win that? 
It's actually, I think it's going to be quite tricky because the pro-life side, if they, they would probably call themselves, will probably go out and they will try to not make it an, an issue about are you in favour of whatever the Pope says or not, mm. but make it such a much more sort of narrow thing. So in 1995, the Irish had a referendum on divorce and, uh, and most people in Western Europe would have thought well, that was an issue that was dealt with decades ago. And then in the start of the campaign, they had a poster saying that Jesus was against divorce and that didn't really work. And then mm. they started saying, well, actually, if all these single mothers, who are going to pay for them? And they start to use different tactics, just like, as Kevin was saying before, you need to have a strong message. They didn't win that referendum, but they got relative, well, very, very close to winning it because they were employing very um, sort of unorthodox uh -huh. tactics okay. and you try to shift the ground. So, so referendums, just like boxing, by the way, is very much about tactics. It's not just about landing blows. It's also about sort of being able to, to, to outthink your opponent and uh, and land the sort of blows that your opponent is not really expecting. Okay, well that is the end of the bout. I award you both the same amount of points. Thank you very much for being good contenders today. Kevin Craig and uh, Professor Matt Kvortrop, thank you all very much. Well, that's all we have time for this week. Next week, they call him Duterte Harry. Others call him Mr. President. You know who I mean. See you then. <laughs>